Hello everybody, this is Tim here again here at Boomstick Critique. I figured it's been a while. Uh, <laughs> might as well jump into my next Wes Craven review. Um, I decided I'm going to do five Wes Craven reviews. I've already done Last House on the Left. I'm following this up with People Under the Stairs. Now, People Under the Stairs is a Wes Craven movie that the fans of Wes Craven's work seem to really enjoy. They seem to like this movie, but I've noticed in the horror community, it seems like People Under the Stairs doesn't get talked about too much. But <clears throat> I do think this is a a great horror movie, honestly, in my opinion. And a pretty decent, I mean, a pretty good social like satire as well. <laughs> I'll go ahead and say it and give my rating right off the bat here. You know, no bullshitting around. Four stars. I give uh, People Under the Stairs four stars. I do enjoy this movie more than Last House on the Left. I think it's an improvement over Last House on the Left, even though I don't mind Last House on the Left. <clears throat> What makes this movie pretty much for me is that the bad guys in the movie are played by Wendy Robbie as the as the woman um, and uh, <clears throat> Everett McGill as the man. They really pretty much just call each other uh, mommy and daddy through the whole movie, but they're pretty much psychotic, rich white folk, which I love. Um, <laughs> they're hilarious in the movie, especially um, Everett McGill. Uh, he had me laughing my ass off in this movie. This movie is really well casted. Another thing I like about this movie is you actually have a, a uh, black kid as the hero, which you don't see a lot in, in, horror, in horror movies, or really any movie, really. <clears throat> um, a black character that's the hero and is not the comedy relief and actually, you know, survives to the end of the movie. <laughs> Pretty much just jump into this movie. Um, you got uh, <clears throat> you got this little boy who's nicknamed uh, Fool. Um it's the kid from the Mighty Ducks movies. Have you ever seen any of the Mighty Ducks movies? This kid was also in those. Um, but yeah, he's his mom's sick. He lives in a shitty part of town. I mean, it's... <laughs> have you ever seen like a shitty part of town? Amplified by 10. You got what this place looks like. But uh, Ben Rames comes up to him one day and says, uh, Listen, buddy, we're going to have to go rob somebody's ass because we need some money. <laughs> Because we're up shit creek here. So basically they go to break into their greedy ass landlord's house. Who, who is Wendy, Wendy, Robbie, and Everett McGill. But uh, they go to break into their house. To steal their, uh, their coin collection. Sorry I blanked out on that for a second. They supposedly have a big ass expensive uh, coin collection. Gold coin collection that's supposed to. <clears throat> it's worth a lot of money. So of course they get able to pay off you know, all their debts and shit. Um, so they break in there, but little do they know, these motherfuckers are crazy. <laughs> so, of course, you know, shit hits the fan when they get in there. <clears throat> Ving Rhames, he gets killed. An early roll for Ving Rhames, he gets shot down by Everett McGill. Um, very early roll for Ving Rhames. I don't think I'd saw him in anything else before this. <clears throat> um, you find out that not only are they crazy, but they're like, you know, beyond crazy. They got the friggin... <clears throat> People living under the stairs. <laughs> Pretty much, they got a whole bunch of like kidnapped kids that they just they kidnapped and raised and cut off different body parts of. Like they if they heard something they weren't supposed to, they lose their ears. If they said something they weren't supposed to, they get their tongue cut off. Pretty much that old hear no evil, speak no evil type thing. Um, and then they get thrown under the stairs. Hence the title, people under the stairs. <clears throat> but yeah, so right off the bat, I like that setup. You know. Crazy ass rich white folk <laughs> doing crazy ass shit uh, makes for an entertaining movie. <clears throat> so pretty much from then on, it's the little boy trapped in the house trying to figure out how the hell do I get out of here. <laughs> I'm in deep shit. Um, and the whole house is like rigged with booby, booby traps. If you watch Wes Craven's earlier movies, he has a thing for booby traps in a lot of his movies, like people in the like people in this movie, people in the stairs, <clears throat> and. Um, Last House on the Left both have booby traps in them. Um, coincidence, I think not. <laughs> but yeah, the whole house is rigged with booby traps. And so they got like this attack. The, the bad guys have like this friggin' attack dog too that keeps chasing after the little boy. Um, one thing leads to another. He makes friends with this uh, girl in the house who the uh, couple in the movie are the bad guys or whatever uh, is also keeping there. Um, he makes friends with her, and they pretty much get chased around the house by this uh, psychotic uh, man and woman, <laughs> uh, Everett McGill, Wendy Robbie, I mean. <clears throat> they get chased around the house by them. Uh, it's really entertaining, and also this movie has comedy in it as well. 
Um, there's like little bits and pieces of comedy in this movie that play into it really well that make kind of make me laugh my ass off. Like uh, Everett McGill tries to catch the little boy or whatever, the little boy like fucking boom, punches him right in the nuts and, <laughs> and hits him over the head with a <coughs> with a part of a toilet, which I thought was hilarious, like knocks his damn brains out. <laughs> um, um, and the little boy is like really resourceful too. He's like, he's not taking no shit either. Like, uh, the dog takes off running after him, and he, like, grabs it and lifts it up like that as Everett McGill is, like, stabbing a knife through the wall and causes him to stab the dog. <clears throat> That's really cool. Anybody who's seen this movie will always, uh, one thing they'll definitely remember, even if they didn't like the movie, is Everett McGill's character running around in a gimp, a gimp suit. If you don't know what a gimp suit is, if you've ever seen Pulp Fiction, if you remember that crazy-ass looking dude from there, in the, that suit or whatever, when these those guys like trying to rape Bruce Willis and Ving Rhames. A coincidence, Ving Rhames is in that movie too, and also has a gimp suit in it. I, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> but yeah, do you remember that dude or whatever in there in the re fucked up suit or whatever that Bruce Willis like knocks out <clears throat> in that movie before he goes and takes those two guys, uh, before he goes and uh, saves Ving Rhames or whatever? Do uh, you remember that fucked up suit or whatever? That's a gimp suit which Everett McGill also has in this movie, and he's, like, running around the house, like, fucking shotgunning it 24-7, which is kind of weird because at the same time, he's shotgunning the house and everything. It's like, anybody hear these shotgun blasts constantly going off in this house? Is there, like, no neighbors around for miles? I mean, what the fuck's going on? <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> that's not really important. What's important is are you having fun? I have a blast. I mean, you got a dude running around in a gimp suit, spouting off crazy shit with a shotgun. That right there automatically equals good time <laughs> as far as this movie goes. Yeah, it's hilarious. He's running off just trying to shoot the hell out of them. <clears throat> but they keep getting away because they, they, there's like corridors in the house and they go through like from one room to the next, uh, which is really fun. <clears throat> they meet up with uh, one of the people under the stairs named Roach who has like no tongue. He has tongue cut out. And um, he's helping them and everything. <clears throat> one thing leads to another. The, the little boy fool, he escapes. Um, he comes back to rescue Alice. The character's name is Alice, the, the girl they're keeping in there. Um, and, uh, of course, you actually figure out that the man and the woman, they act like husband and wife, but they're actually brother and sister. So you got some, like, incest shit going on, too. So it's like, damn, Craven, no hold bar, man. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, it all makes for a very entertaining and enjoyable movie. So I shit you not that this is a great, this is a great fun horror film. Um <clears throat> You also find out that they're uh, the uh, the couple, uh, the evil couple, are actually greedy bastards too, and they got a shitload of money. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I had a cough there coming, but they got a shitload of money too, <coughs> as well as uh, all the gold. So I explains where all the. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Don't know what the hell's going on? Got a crazy cough going on there. But anyway, back to what I was talking about. I don't want to get sidetracked here over a damn cough. But anyway, yeah, they got a shitload of money basically there in the house too, as well as all the gold they have. So they're greedy fucks as well. I mean, um, super greedy fucks, I should say. But yeah, basically, <clears throat> fool comes back to the house. He wants to break out Alice, rescue her. He he comes in there. And he brings like uh, he brings more people with him, of course. So they come there. One thing leads to another. The people under the stairs escape. They come out. They attack Wendy Robbie. And Wendy Robbie, I've talked about Everett McGill a lot. She's really fun in this movie, too. She's like a crazy, kind of like a crazy religious nut, really. <laughs> it just seems like she's, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, like a religious whack job, like one of them crazy. Uh, or people who are, like somebody who's like on the side of the street. Who's holding up like the We Are Doom sign or something like that, except took to the extreme <coughs> here, even well, even more of an extreme to the point of like she's running around with a knife, um, like trying to stab the shit out of uh, the character of Alice. And friggin' the people in the stars get loose and they retaliate against uh, against uh, Wendy Robbie and they grab her and they cause her they cause her to get stabbed and so she dies. Um, of course, Alice finds out that, uh, Wendy Robbie, though, and Everett McGill aren't really her parents, so she finally stands up to him. Her character does. She's been abused by him for God knows how long before the movie even happened. <coughs> yeah. 
And so Everett, Everett McGill is still chasing after Fool with a shotgun. And I love the I love this. Uh, the character of Fool has like this explosive ready. He's gonna like put these two wires together and blow the shit out of Everett McGill, <laughs> who's still in his gimp suit, which I love. Except he doesn't have the mask on anymore, <laughs> which I kind of miss at this point. But he's gonna blow the shit out of him. <clears throat> and Everett McGill's uh, like uh, like standing there, and I love how the little boy don't take no shit because he's all he always says stuff like, "Hey, fuck you, man." <laughs> Talking to Everett McGill, I love that. Of course, he, he puts the wires together and blows the shit out of Everett McGill, and he like fucking flies backwards. Um, <clears throat> I don't think Everett McGill dies actually. He just kind of flies backwards and falls down into like this pit. I guess he you could say he died, but it just seems more like he's knocked out, like he could just wake back up. But it's not really important because the whole damn house, uh, like part of it blows up, and all the money inside the house <clears throat> that Everett McGill and Wendy Robbie have been like stockpiling. <clears throat> comes flying all out of the house it's everywhere and all the poor people uh, from the projects or whatever all the, all the poor people they take uh, they, they get the money you know that these greedy bastards have been uh, stockpiling up and you know of course they're they're charging uh, way too much for rent for all the <clears throat> well basically Wendy Robbie and Everett McGill are landlords and they're charging way too much for rent and they don't need the money because they already got shit of money so it's like all the money that they've stolen from all these people is returned back to them after the house explodes. So I like that. Um, and then the people under the stairs just kind of disappear into the night. And uh, you hear the song, like, Do the Right Thing, playing as the movie ends, you know, and Alice and Fool are fine and safe. And it's a happy ending, which I like. But, yeah, all in all, this is a really fun movie. I'm just, you got crazy people under the stairs um, who look scary but actually aren't evil. You got crazy ass Everett McGill. I'm running around in gimp suit, which automatically would boost this movie up to at least two and a half. <laughs> you got Wendy Robbie uh, running around with a butcher knife. Um, she's great. She plays a great psychopath. Um, she actually has a cameo in Vampire in Brooklyn <clears throat> as a crazy religious lady in that movie. If you ever see Vampire in Brooklyn, if you see this movie right beforehand, you can spot her in that um, in uh, Vampire in Brooklyn in the police station scene. I haven't seen that movie in forever, but I know she's in it. Um, but yeah, those two, Everett McGill and Wendy Robbie, make this movie. Uh, it's just hilarious, especially, <laughs> I can't stress this enough, especially Everett McGill makes me laugh my ass off. <clears throat> like, he thinks he killed Fool in the movie in one scene, but he's actually stabbed the dog. And then when uh, he moves, like, the part of the wall out of the way or whatever, and the dog falls down, he thinks it's going to be the little boy, but it's the dog. He goes, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, just his reaction is priceless. <clears throat> the one kind of weak spot in the movie is some of the humor... Uh, gets a little bit annoying at maybe one or two certain points. I wish the movie would have took maybe a little bit of the more goofy humor out and played it a little bit more serious in some of those scenes. Well, like one of those scenes, like where uh, the little boy is like coming down the chimney or whatever, and uh, Wendy Robbie's trying to grab him, and he like sticks his fingers up her nose or whatever. It's meant to be funny. But uh, at the same time, I wish it would have played a little more serious and it gets a little bit hokey with that kind of stuff. <laughs> but all in all, I'm... I'm, it's a small growl and otherwise great horror movie. Definitely one to recommend and to check out if you are <clears throat> if you are a Wes Craven fan or a horror fan. But yeah, definitely one to uh, to check out and seek out on Blu-ray. I think Screen Factory has a Blu-ray of this. Um, I don't know what special features it comes with, but I would love to check it out. I had this movie on DVD. It doesn't have any features, so fuck you, whoever released this DVD which I don't feel like searching for right now to find out. But yeah, all in all, as far as this film goes, it's a four-star film. Very enjoyable horror movie. I highly recommend it. One of Wes Craven's best, in my opinion. And I'll see you guys again with the next review, which will either be Shocker or Serpent in the Rainbow. But I will review both those movies, <clears throat> no matter what. Like I said, I'm going to do five Wes Craven reviews in total. I wasn't going to do as many as I possibly could, but I figured... Just do five. Just do five good five that I really like to, to honor the man, you know, because I am a big fan of his. So just do, you know, an even five of Wes Craven movies that are, you know, the shit, in my opinion. <laughs> so I'll see you guys again with either Serpent in the Rainbow or Shocker.